Welcome to today's webinar, Goodbye Wild West, Hello Better Device Security. Got to love those marketing titles, right? Uh, my name is Nick Thompson, and I will be your host today. Uh, let's take a look at what we'll be going over. First off, going to do just a brief overview of Jamf, just to make sure everyone's on the same page of who we are and what we do. Then we're going to talk about some uh, unique security features that are uh, unique to Apple. Uh, we'll also discuss then how to enforce these security standards uh, using Jamf Pro. Uh, we'll then move on to talk about reporting and uh, reporting on security compliance and how to handle remediation. Again, we'll wrap up with some next steps and we'll do some Q&A at the very end too. So just a brief overview of, of Jamf here. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with us, this is our mission. We help organizations succeed with Apple. Uh, and we've been doing this now for 15 years. Uh, this is the only thing that we know is that we love to uh, uh, manage Apple devices. So we don't manage PCs, we don't manage Android devices. We only solely focus on the Apple ecosystem. So how do we help organizations succeed with Apple? Well, we do it with our two products. Uh, Jamf Now, which is simple mobile device management, really no IT required, and Jamf Pro, really uh, Apple management for the IT professionals. And if you kind of look at uh, the stack rank of these things, you know, Now, again, is all about easy device setup and simple management versus Pro. Uh, really goes through the entire uh, uh, lifecycle management of managing Apple devices. Uh, for today's presentation, we're going to primarily focus on Jamf Pro. Uh, if you are a smaller organization, highly recommend you check out Jamf now. You can sign up for a free trial on our website for now. Uh, and here's what the products look like. It's all web-based, very interactive. Uh, you simply access everything through your web browser and that's where you can uh, manage your devices. One last thing about us, we have a lot of organizations uh, that do rely on us uh, to manage their Apple devices, uh, including some of the traditional markets that you see Apple, Apple in, uh, such as tech and marketing, uh, but of course in some of the larger organizations out there as well too, uh, top uh, Fortune 500 companies, most valuable brands, and something that we're very proud of, of helping a large number of schools. So enough about us, uh, let's talk about Apple and some of the unique security features uh, that surround the Apple ecosystem. Now, before I get into uh, the exact security features, I wanna set a little context here as to why this is even important. And that's because we see Apple devices are growing specifically in the enterprise and in education. Uh, we did a survey just at the very end of last year and we asked uh, organizations, uh, do you see Mac and iOS growing inside of your organization? 74% said that Mac is growing and 76% said iOS devices are growing as well too. So large number of, of these devices are coming in uh, to the enterprise here. Uh, and we kind of see a few reasons why this is happening. First reason why we see this is happening is due to some demographics, right? Millennials are entering the workforce and they are demanding to use technology that they are familiar with. This is a great uh, PricewaterCoopers uh, survey here that found, uh, you know, 59% of millennials said providing state-of-the-art technology was important to them when considering a job. And 78% said technology that they like to use makes them more effective at work. Very interesting stats. Also, Apple devices are just compatible now on enterprise networks. Uh, from the different protocols that are being used, the file types, uh, the shared drives that you would typically access, uh, software titles you know, are, have primarily my, uh, been ported over to the Mac and have native versions running on them. And of course, we use cloud applications for a lot of other things now too. And all the devices that we connect to like printers and cameras just work out of the box. Uh, not to mention too that Apple has been focused on the enterprise by making some very strategic partnerships with IBM, Cisco, SAP, and Deloitte. So that leads us to uh, the operating systems here, right? Uh, Apple puts out uh, uh, some really great platforms and these are the ones that we're gonna focus on today here, uh, talking about Mac OS, iOS and tvOS. Uh, if you're not familiar with tvOS, that's the operating system that runs on Apple TV. And um, you know, if you, we kind of think back to 
uh, when iOS was originally announced, when the iPhone was originally announced, uh, Steve Jobs went up on stage and famously said that, you know, iPhone runs Mac OS 10. And, and that was a really major thing. Uh, but it really cements the fact that these operating systems really share a common core to them. Um, and they share some very similar low-level file systems. Um, and what's great is these are based on something even, uh, even more secure, uh, and that is a, a core of Unix. Uh, so if you're not familiar, all of Apple's products are based off of Unix operating systems. Uh, specifically, they've uh, used uh, FreeBSD uh, to build on top of, uh, and, and that's what we end up with today. Is a really great foundational core of Unix with the Mac, with the Apple operating systems derived from those. Now, of course, Apple has added a lot of security features into their operating systems to make it more secure, to tailor them beyond just what is standard inside of a very secure already Unix system. Let's talk about uh, what's unique to the Mac here first. So these are some features uh, that Apple's been adding over the years to the Mac operating system to make it more secure for uh, end users and for the enterprise. Uh, so any software updates that you get, uh, you know, they're coming directly from a trusted source. They're coming from Apple. And there's a lot of signing that goes involved uh, that is involved with that, uh, so that anytime you get any updates from Apple, you know that uh, they are secure and that they are trusted. Apple's introduced uh, some new ways to essentially remove uh, root access uh, to end users, uh, and that's through something called System Integrity Protection, or SIP as you'll see it abbreviated everywhere. Um, and this essentially protects some of those core files that are part of the operating system that you don't want your end users touching, uh, that you don't want applications touching either. Apple's done a really great job of securing that down in a really interesting way. Uh, they've added things like Gatekeeper, which uh, lets you, as I, uh, which lets you define where you can get applications from, whether they come from the Mac App Store, which uh, is always vetted by Apple, or if they come from identified developers that have to get uh, signed by Apple, uh, or if you allow from anywhere uh, off the internet. Apple's built in encryption tools into the Mac, and uh, they use something called File Vault, which uh, it lets, uh, lets you as IT uh, encrypt your devices so that uh, the entire disk is, is encrypted and really uh, high levels of security there. Uh, they've got some tools uh, that help against malware, uh, and that's something known as XProtect. It's really not a user end user facing thing there's really not a, a user interface for that but it's a set of definitions that apple keeps up to date uh, that will prevent any sort of known malware uh, from running uh, and that's something that uh, apple just maintains for you automatically which is great uh, they've been a pioneer in introducing app sandboxing, making sure that uh, apps do not uh, share data between each other so that uh, you have very secure applications. Uh, and that's something that Apple's been doing now for a while. And of course, they are always sticklers for privacy controls, uh, controls that the user can uh, define and IT can define as well too. Then we look at iOS, you see a lot of the very similar features here too. Uh, trusted software updates from Apple. Uh, an even more secure system actually because of how much uh, it is locked down. Um, and it enables you to do things like uh, erase the entire operating system and start over extremely fast. Um, you have the App Store again where all apps are trusted and vetted by Apple. Uh, they've been introducing biometrics uh, with Touch ID on the iPhone and iPad. And of course, they've even brought it over to the Mac as well, too. Uh, there's hardware level encryption on iOS. Uh, you have that same sort of sandboxing and privacy controls. And something that's unique to iOS that we'll talk about in a little bit here uh, more in depth is supervision which is essentially a special state that you can put iOS devices in to receive extra levels of management. So here's kind of the, the management stack that we've uh, talked about here so far. We have a great foundation in Unix that Apple has built their core operating systems on top of. 
and then have added these extra layers of controls you know, that were designed for the end user force, for the consumer, uh, and you know, that, that really keep everything protected. But you may be asking yourselves, well, how do I enable all of these security controls? These all sound really great. Um, you know, do I have to go around and touch each of these devices to turn on Gatekeeper, to turn on File Vault on there? Well, of course not. Uh, and that's where Apple has added in a management layer. And that's where we at Jamf, we live and breathe in this layer here. And so when we talk about management for the Apple operating systems, uh, we're really talking about something known as mobile device management or MDM. And this is Apple's built-in management framework. Uh, it is across all of their different operating systems. And really all this is is little profiles that you can build and they define various settings inside of the OS. So you can say, you know, turn this particular setting on or set this value to there and, and it does it. Um, these profiles are all delivered over the air and they're delivered via Apple's push notification service. That maintains a constant connection to your devices so you don't have to. And again, these are really just small little files. They're, really, they're XML files and you can build them using a tool like Jamf. So what can you build with these? Well, there's a number of different options and I just have some examples here for you. You can do things like uh, define the passcodes uh, for your devices, right? Uh, that's always a great layer of security right there is just making sure a passcode is enabled. Um, you can restrict various settings. Uh, you can define your network protocols. Uh, you can uh, define how your VPN settings work. Um, you can configure your accounts for your users so they don't have to uh, type in their exchange URL uh, from the very beginning. You can just configure that for them. Uh, you can deploy certificates. You can um, bind them to Active Directory. Uh, you can define all those security and privacy controls that you find in the um, system preferences pane. And you can do some really advanced things as well too. So again, these are profiles that you build and then deploy to all of your Apple devices. They work across the entire Apple ecosystem here from uh, Apple TVs to iPhones, Mac, and uh, on uh, iPad as well too. Now, focusing in on the Mac, you know, MDM for the Mac is really good, but you know, sometimes organizations need a little bit more. They need to do things, you know, like uh, modifying accounts, do terminal commands, uh, things like that. And uh, that's why we at Jamf, uh, we developed something that uh, goes, uh, that sits kind of side by side with MDM, uh, but does a little bit more. And that's our agent. Uh, this is the Jamf agent uh, for Mac management. And uh, it's really just a binary. It's a binary that gets installed after you enroll your devices, and it lets you create a hidden admin account. Um, and it's a hidden admin account that you, of course, define what the username and what the password is for all that. Um, but why would you want to add a hidden admin account? Well, it's because it grants you remote root access to your client Macs. And that, in turn, lets you do some really advanced things. It lets you execute various policies, run scripts, install software that's outside of the Mac App Store, uh, and a whole lot more. In fact, here's a little a list of kind of everything that the agent is capable of doing. So installing package files, um, enforcing file vault, uh, and even escrowing those keys back into your server so you have your, your encryption keys all in one central location. Uh, you can bind your Macs to uh, a directory service. So if you're using like AD, you can do that. Uh, anything that you can run in terminal can be turned into a script. Uh, so if you've got some uh, you know, custom terminal commands that you would love to run on all of your Macs, uh, you can just bake that into a script. You can set the firmware password, uh, install printer drivers, and even modify your local user account. So if you want to uh, remove admin rights from all of your, your users, you can do that. Or if you want to grant admin rights, you can, of course, do that as well, too. So uh, combined, you have both the MDM framework and the Jamf agent that sits side by side uh, to really offer complete Mac management for your, uh, for your Macs here. So um, here again is our stack uh, with that great foundation of Unix 
having Apple's operating systems. Uh, you have all these great extra controls that Apple has built into these operating systems, and those controls can then be set via the management layer. Now, you may be asking, great, how do I even get my Macs or my iOS devices into management? Well, that's where Apple has made this even easier for us here with some of these deployment programs that they've come out with. Um, and these have, been, these have evolved over the years, and uh, they've been designed to help organizations uh, really streamline that onboarding process of new devices and deploying applications to your devices. So first one I want to talk about is the Device Enrollment Program, or DEP, or you might hear it be called just DEP, uh, but it's Apple's Device Enrollment Program. And what is it exactly? Well, it enables zero-touch deployment. Um, that means you can order your devices from Apple or from your authorized resellers that support DEP, and during the initial setup, uh, the device is automatically enrolled into your Jamf server uh, that uh, you don't have to touch it ever. Uh, you don't have to worry about imaging. It is automatically enrolled into your Jamf server. Uh, on the iOS and tvOS side, this also enables supervision, which again grants you that deeper level of management for uh, iOS and tvOS. The other deployment program that Apple has is something called their Volume Purchase Program, or VPP. Uh, and this lets you license uh, software from the app stores, both Mac and iOS app stores. And it lets you distribute them to uh, either your individuals or you can distribute them directly to the device. And if you distribute it directly to the device, that means you don't have to uh, use Apple IDs at all. Uh, you can just deploy them directly to the device, no Apple ID required, which is really nice. Uh, and these are free programs, so you can sign up for these programs on Apple's website. Now, I'll just make a quick note here. Uh, if you're a school, uh, they've combined these programs, they've combined DEP and VPP into something that they call Apple School Manager. And Apple School Manager does a whole lot more for schools, but we're not going to get into that in this webinar. So what does this look like from an end user's perspective? Let's take a Mac and let's set it up here for the first time. So I'm booting up my Mac. And, uh, and I go through the, the normal setup assistant here that you would normally see uh, when turning on a Mac for the first time. I simply select my, uh, my country, I select my language, I connect it to a, a network. Now this doesn't have to be your corporate network, right? This can be just any network here. All it needs to do is talk to Apple's activation servers. And once it does that, that's when uh, you can start kicking over all of your uh, management stuff. So here we are and then uh, talking to Apple's activation server and it says there's a configuration available and it says this Mac will be automatically configured by and then you can insert your company name right there. Users can't skip this step and they have to accept the uh, remote management here. Additionally, you could provide a uh, layer of security if you want here, and you can provide, you can uh, require that your users log in with any sort of LDAP credentials that you might use. So that might be uh, Active Directory right here, uh, or really anything that uses LDAP. Then I create my computer account, and uh, it does not have to be a full administrator here. You can lock this down so that your users are only standard users. Uh, so you get that option right here. Um, and if you want to skip this step altogether, uh, you can use network-based accounts and, and it would skip this step. Uh, but you'd have a, you have a choice here. They can either be full admin, they can be standard, or you can skip it uh, and use network accounts. So then my Mac is set up and I'm brought to my lovely home screen here and I get a little notification and if we zoom in on this notification, we can see it says, you know, installing software and security settings, check out self-service for more resources. Uh, again, this used those technologies we just talked about. We've provisioned the Mac using DEP. We installed some software in the background using VPP. And we applied those security settings using MDM and the Jamf agent as well. We'll open up self, uh, system preferences here, and you can see all of those settings have come down onto the Mac. 
And then just a quick plug for self-service. Uh, this is the app that comes a part of Jamf Pro uh, that lets you as IT populate it with whatever you would like to have in there. So th these can be apps, these can be scripts, printer drivers, whatever you'd like, and users can just simply click uh, to, to get what they need without having to ask IT for any sort of help. So that's our management stack, right? Um, the uh, great foundation, the operating system, the great uh, tools that Apple built in, into there, the management framework for turning on those, and the deployment programs for getting devices enrolled into in the first place. So next, uh, let's talk about enforcing your security standards. Uh, the first step is, of course, to define what your security standards are in the first place. Uh, there are a lot of acronyms out there that uh, define what sort of security standards your industry is in. Um, and it's up to you to kind of determine you know, what are the exact requirements for being HIPAA compliant or for being SOC 2 compliant or for uh, adhering to the uh, CIS uh, standard as well too. The great thing about this though is that Jamf is a very flexible framework. You simply need to define what all of your values are, what all of your settings are, and then use that to build out different profiles and policies uh, to apply to all of your Macs. So again, what you do is you use the different profiles or the MDM side of things and policies, the Jamf agent side of things, to apply all of the different standards that you have for your organization. Let's walk through a few examples here. Uh, so this is what it would look like uh, to build, to uh, restrict uh, maybe some of the consumer facing features on the Mac. And this is using a profile right here. Um, and so I'm going to uh, disable things like maybe I don't want the camera on or uh, maybe I'm going to disable Apple Music or uh, disallow iCloud. And you can see how granular you can get with uh, disallowing some of the iCloud stuff. Uh, just as a side note, I think iCloud's super secure, but, uh, you know, your InfoSec team uh, may not uh, agree with, uh, with, with me and uh, then you want to turn them all off. Uh, you can also in enforce gatekeeper settings. Remember, gatekeeper was that where you define uh, what, where uh, apps are allowed to be downloaded from. And so here we've said uh, we can allow our users to get apps from the App Store and from identified developers, but we don't want them to ever override those settings. Uh, that way they uh, would never be able to get any sort of nefarious apps that they shouldn't be having on their Macs. Uh, I can enforce file vault encryption. Now, this is actually using uh, the Jamf agent here, and uh, I'm applying the disk encryption settings that I've set up ahead of time, and it's going to enforce those uh, disk settings uh, the moment the Mac is turned on, you know, for the first time or any time it detects that it's not uh, encrypted. And uh, it's going to take that encryption key and then escrow it back into my server for me. Also using the Jamf agent, I can uh, restrict apps too. So I'm going to uh, actually uh, uh, restrict a certain process. You know, in this case, I don't want uh, the uh, BitTorrent client uh, ever running on a Mac. Uh, and so if it ever finds it, it's going to quit it, and it's going to delete that app altogether for me too. Uh, just as a side note, uh, a lot of uh, IT administrators use this around upgrade season, and they uh, disable the process of install macOS High Sierra uh, to disable that particular app. Additionally, you can do some uh, one-off commands to specific Macs. Uh, so if I have a Mac that's lost, uh, I could lock it. I could remotely erase it. Um, and then the same is true for iOS devices too, uh, which actually have more commands available to them. So if I lose an iPhone, right, I can remotely erase that. Uh, I could put it into loss mode. I could set the wallpaper, or reboot it, or shut it down altogether. Next, moving on to reporting and uh, remediation. So. Uh, Reporting is all about gathering inventory data. So when you have a device roll, enrolled into uh, Jamf, it collects a lot of great inventory data uh, from uh, just general information about the device itself, when it last checked in, where it checked in, um, and uh, hardware information, so the serial number, the model identifier, uh, all of that. Uh, 
the software, of course, is reported as well, too. So it'll show you uh, the different operating system that's on there and uh, any apps that are installed. You can even uh, get some app usage logs. So you can see uh, if your users are actually using that copy of Photoshop that they really begged IT to get. What do you do with this information? Well, you create two things. You create static groups and you can create smart groups. Static groups are just a definition of uh, a certain number of Macs, and then uh, you apply that po profile or policy to that group of devices, again, Macs or iOS devices. Smart groups work the opposite way. Smart groups says, find Macs that meet this particular uh, criteria, and it will, dynam it will dynamically show you all those devices that meet that criteria, and then you can have a policy or a profile automatically applied to that group. That's where a lot of the power of the automation comes in here. And this is where what you can use for a lot of your remediation. I'm going to show you uh, just a few examples of what that might look like. So uh, here's one policy. I'm saying find all my devices without a password. And it's going to dynamically show me just the devices that do not have a password. And then it's going to automatically apply my, my policy that I built ahead of time uh, to reapply the password, to enforce the password on there. You can do the same thing with encryption. So find all of my devices that have File Vault turned off. It will display just those devices. And then it will automatically reapply my File Vault uh, policy, saying turn it back on. And uh, my, my last example here, find all my devices without secure Wi-Fi, show me all of, all of them, and apply the Wi-Fi policy. So you use a lot of this for your remediation steps. Now, I want to address one thing, and that is uh, the Center for Internet Security. And uh, a lot of people use this as a great benchmark just to get started of, of, you know, where do I even start for securing my Macs? You know, who has a good benchmark out there? Uh, can't talk highly enough about these guys. Uh, they come out with a, uh, you know, they're an independent organization. They come out with a really great benchmark for uh, the different versions of iOS and macOS. And in fact, uh, we really like them a lot uh, to the point where our professional services team has developed uh, some open source scripts for anyone uh, that's using uh, CIS as their standard, anyone using Jamf. Um, and you can find these out on GitHub, github.com slash Jamf Professional Services. And uh, what this consists of is a couple of scripts that let you define um, you know, what settings to turn on as defined inside of CIS. And it lets you audit them and do some remediation. Now, there's some assembly required with this. Um, and uh, you know, certainly recommend that you reach out to our professional services team if uh, you do have any questions about it or want some help. Um, but you, know, you always want to do some sort of uh, organizational evaluation with this. Um, and you can take these policies and scripts and, and, and run them in your own environment. And it really serves as a great remediation solution, too. This is kind of what it looks like here. My three scripts where you define what your baselines are. You kind of can go through the CIS checklist and say, yep, I want that one, or no, we don't need that, and yes, I want that other one. Uh, and then uh, it applies those for you. Uh, the next script will just simply check for compliance. Uh, and then the third script will take any sort of action on that remediation for you. So. Uh, some really cool things that, that uh, people have done here uh, using the policy framework uh, to, to accomplish things like applying CIS standards. So to recap here, uh, again, we talked about Jamf Pro today, and we talked about how uh, it can do uh, those zero-touch deployments. That was with DEP. Uh, how we can do device configuration. Uh, that was with the MDM and the Jamf agent. Uh, talked about how we can deploy apps to our devices. That was uh, thanks to VPP. And how we can do some extensive inventory with those smart groups and static groups. And we, how we can use all of that to make sure our devices are secure and to provide our users a unique way to get the apps that they need without having to talk to IT all the time. Some quick tech notes. Um, the server side of things, you can have it either be cloud hosted. Uh, we have data centers uh, in North America and EU. Uh, AWS is our infrastructure. 
or uh, you can run it on premise if you really want to as well too. Uh, and it's a really lightweight server. Uh, it can run on Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. And uh, it's just a MySQL database talking to Tomcat. We support all of these great Apple programs that we talked about today from uh, the Apple School Manager, Device Enrollment Program, Volume Purchase Program, and Apple's Push Notification Service, which maintains that constant connection to your devices for you. We also have a lot of great third-party integrations. So uh, we, of course, know that uh, Apple devices don't ever live alone inside of a, a corporate net network. Uh, we need to play well with all of the great things that are out there. So uh, we work with your directory services. We can work with uh, your single sign-on tools that you might have. Um, and we have a way of sharing inventory data to SCCM and sharing inventory data to ServiceNow, if you're using ServiceNow. Uh, we work great with all of the, the things that Apple and Cisco are doing on the network side of things. Uh, really interesting partnership there, and, and uh, we're, we're uh, implementing all the things that, that they are doing. Um, and, of course, we have a very extensive API, so if you want to write something yourself, uh, you can certainly do that. Some quick next steps here for you. Uh, check out Jamf.com. Reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. We've got uh, sales and engineer folks across the globe and uh, would love to uh, help you get started with your particular deployments. Uh, again, uh, check out our other webinars, and this is where we'll post uh, this recording once, uh, once complete. And lastly, check out Jamf Nation. Uh, I can't speak more highly of this. Uh, it is a free, open community. 50,000 IT members uh, go here and talk about Apple-related IT. Uh, it's more than just Jamf, and uh, it's a really great resource for you to check out. With that, thank you, everyone. That concludes our main presentation.